Ready for play. First set, Jeanette Preet to serve. So it's Robbie Jeanette Preet to serve. The 21-year-old against the 34-year-old. A player who's won one title to another who's won 58 titles and eight grand slams. And that's a, just a short little jab to say, hey, don't think it's going to be a walkover tonight. I'm in this match for real. attention to how well Ginepri gets the job done when he has a short ball and has to come into net. He said his volleys don't feel sharp. Well, Agassi using Ginepri there as a punch bag, one side then to the other. Well, the accuracy of Andre Agassi is impeccable and his shot selection is right up there as well. He always seems to know where he wants to play the ball. First ace of the match. And if history tells us anything, at least for this year, Robbie Ginepri has saved his best stuff for the Grand Slams. Well, a pretty good opening game that from uh, Ginepri. Confident, doesn't show any signs of nerves. And why should he? No break here, they'll be just marching around straight into the second game. Yeah, he round of 16 the Australian Open and went round to 16 at Wimbledon. Without those two results, he's had a very, very average year, especially for Ginepri, who had such a great year last year. Now compare that to Andre Agassi, who lost in the first round at the French Open to Jerome Anel, who, if I recall, was ranked about 200 and something. That was at the French Open, and Agassi, of course, missed Wimbledon this year due to a hip injury, and and then he played, of course, earlier in the year at the Australian Open. So we reached the semi-finals. And I just felt throughout the summer, Agassi lost uh, very badly as well at the pre-Wimbledon Stellar Artois Championship. He just felt one more disaster. He might think of quitting, but he went on and he won, didn't he, a, a Masters title. Jeff. Well, that was an unbelievably scary run for American fans. Andre Agassi fans when he was losing all those first rounds three in a row. Never had done that for years. Oh, and then he pulled out of Wimbledon. That was wise. But he showed he's still a class act by winning. His 58th title. And Agassi took off a full month after Ooh. Wimbledon when he pulled out there, recuperated that hip issue. Got stronger. He said he had too much time on his hands. And he was so ready to go when he came out in L.A. and got his 800th career win against Alexander Bogomolov. And then he won in Cincinnati. Hardcourt beat Hewitt in three sets. And it was his first title in over a year. Which is quite remarkable for Andre. 18 months he went yeah. without a title. That Cincinnati title was really important for him, it, just to get in the heads of players like this man, Ginepri, and say, hey, I'm still here. I'm not even close to leaving. Well, speed of a man of 34, and then he was able to deliver such an angled shot. That is extraordinary. Just watch this. A 34-year-old with the speed of a man of 21. Look at this get. And he's got the hands to keep it under control. That's such a great start for Agassi. I'm sure we're going to discuss uh, Jeff at the age of 34, Andre. How long has he got left? It's inevitable. We've got to talk about it for the next few hours. Agassi says he doesn't even know. I just felt this year as it goes to one all that those back-to-back -back 
losses, those three matches, I think there was a big question mark. I think you're dead right when he won Cincinnati. That was probably one of his biggest ever wins in his huge career. And playing here in his 19th successive US Open. Absolutely remarkable. Of course, last year reaching the Sen is leading to Juan Carlos Ferrero in four. I always feel Agassi has got to win his early matches in reasonably quick start, so he has energy left in the second week. If you know, it always helps any player. It's a long tournament. And we saw Gil Reyes, the man in the black suit. There he is. They like to create some space. I guarantee Darren Cahill's up there somewhere, but the player box pretty sparse. He's got a tight entourage on there. Close friends that have been with him for years. A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez, the baseball star, playing for the New York Yankees now, catching some tennis. That's good to see other players, other sportsmen. Well, this match has started off at a blistering pace. Both players firing shots with severity. And there's another from Andre Agassi, who's already produced a couple of good winners, opposed to giving up his three. The best return in the business right there. Well, there it is. There's a break of serve in the third game, and Agassi's made a flying start here. 2-1, opening set with the break. I just feel, Jeff, that um, watching these first few games at Ginepri is going for broke a little bit too much, and he's just making two or three unforced errors, which, in fact, is all that Andre needs, because Andre is so consistent. Yeah, you can tell he's just caught up in the moment out there right now. He's, he's playing quickly. He's going for a lot of shots early. And you just feel that he's pressed right now. He hasn't calmed down enough into this match. I mean, he even talked about it earlier. He said, I know what, what it's going to be like, but it's still tough to be placed in this situation and, and, and so he's pretty much easier said than done to just go out and, and relax. I mean, how do you relax against Agassi? Center court at the U.S. Open. Agassi's won this event twice. He's by far the favorite of all the American players. And you end up feeling it. We can see that in Ginepri's play right now. You start pressing and things happen so quickly before you even realize it. That's the big problem is that points just keep going by you and now Ginepri's down a break like that. And he's sitting in that chair. He didn't even have time to catch his breath. Twelve minutes past nine. Monday night, August the 30th, 2004. The evening, moving on. Agassi moving on. Two and up with a break. And serving against this 21-year-old American rival giving away 13 years when Agassi played his very first US Open Ginepri was just two years old well Full credit to Ginepri for running every ball down. As Agassi had him on the end of a piece of string there. 15 all, 2 1. That's an issue. Difficult volley there. Oh, Ginepri, but he's, he's been worrying about his volleys for weeks now and the first point we saw an overhead that must have felt good but that was the first time Ginepri had to play a, a fairly difficult volley and missed it. 
and that starts chipping away at your confidence. You, you, if you come out and you're already worried about a shot and you execute it well and it feels good, that could set you up for the rest of the match. If you miss it, it could set you up the wrong way. This for 3-1, opening set. There it is, comfortably for Agassi. He's already hit top form, straight in. No messing. Ginepri wins matches, excuse me, Dave. Ginepri wins matches on retrieving balls and doing it so well that he'll get an opportunity if he hangs in the point long enough. But Agassi doesn't give you that opportunity. He keeps pinpoint, with pinpoint accuracy, every ground stroke, every shot. So you can't just play defense against that. Well, we're only into the fifth game, and Jeanette Pre eight unforced errors, it says on our computer. Under Agassi, nil. Agassi had a perfect schedule going into this event, really. To win Cincinnati, get back on the board in grand fashion. Then he had the next tournament in D.C., went to the semis, lost a tough one to a young player, but that was fine. He took the next week off. And here he is now. So that's a nice little four-week schedule of, of match play and confidence. But you know Agassi really gets up and really only prepares for Grand Slam events. I'm sure for the Masters as well, but it's the Grand Slam events he wants. He's a master scheduler to get there. 30, 40. Well, here's a break point for a double break in this opening set, and you just feel Jeanette who is just going for a bit too much. There is 10 now. Two per game so far. Yes, yes. Really sprinting through this set. Well, tremendous athleticism from Ginepri, but my word, Agassi stays cool and calm and threads the needle. Not an unforced there. He's sharp as a tack right now. Oh, he just waited, Agassi, just to see where Ginepri was going and delivered. That's another break point. Help! What works against Agassi is stepping in early. Cyril Saulnier, a great Frenchman who's coming into his own later in his career had a tough ratch against Agassi. Lost in the quarterfinals of DC, six in the third. But what he did so well against Andre that almost won him the match was take balls on the rise and get to the ball before Agassi has a chance to get back and play. That's how you beat ground strokers with great accuracy. It's a winner. There, you never feel like he's got to hit winners now to win points. That's a terrible feeling. Game Another game. winner. It's his second ace. And that brings him to 2 3, but actually still got the one break. Actually, leads 3 2. Do you think he's playing the right game, Ginepri? Going for it quite a lot. He, he's great scrambling, I must say, getting the ball back, as you said. Well, that's, he's playing his game, so it is the right game for now. There's no need to try to alter what you like to do best on the court at this stage. You know, he is pressing, there's no doubt. And that was a big, 
lucky in a way game to get through that last hole because he did go for a few shots and managed to hit a couple on the line and get through a nice serve at the end. But he was in jeopardy of going down two breaks, 4-1, just like that. And he's not going to really change, especially when he's not confident coming in at the net. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a long night for Gennepri, no doubt. If he's going to win this match, he's going to have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Agassiz. Start generating a bigger forehand. He's got to serve well, for sure. Because Andre will be all over his second serve. And Agassiz started well. Confident. Agassiz is ready as anyone in this tournament to play. He can certainly win. Andre Agassi, the master, is serving at 3-2 in this opening set against Robbie Ginepri, American rival. Agassi has been playing great service games this year. His serve has evolved throughout his career. When you think of the big servers in the game, Karlovic, Federer, Roddick, Lubacic, Agassiz number five in service games won. 88% this year. You don't think of him having a dominating serve. And of course, he's not getting it done with tons of aces like the big boys. But he does spot his serve up well, and it's gotten him out of a lot of trouble. And that's how he won Cincinnati. He was able to come up with big serves when he needed it. He's number two in second serve points one on the tour this year. Who's number one? Good question. I think <laughs> at the time it was Andy Roddick. Sounds right. Because Andy goes for his second, doesn't he? Well, it's 3-2, Andre. 30 all. Buzz continues around the stadium. They just love watching Andre play at night, especially against a really good opponent. And now that good opponent, Ginepri, has a chance to break back. 30-40. good. Andre kept peppering that backhand cross court. Eventually able to move that ball out wide enough to stretch out Ginepri and create that bit of a floater. And look what he does. Half on the line. On break point. Jeez. And that's where that stat of second serve points one or break points held becomes a little bit deceiving because he's not really getting it done with his serve in a way. He's doing it with just such solid ground, he's a mental toughness. Agassiz's first ace of the match gives him a 4-2 lead in this opening set. Robbie's not pleased. And he is right. It is just out. And the new balls leave a nice clear mark. So Ag uh, Ginepri saw something. He was accurate. 
You usually feel the players are right most of the time. They have a feel for it, don't they? Their, their eyes are tuned to it. Team Ulrich, unfortunately, is on the other side of that call. Couldn't. I just wonder how those points always add up in matches. But to Ginepka's credit, he pointed it out and just left it. 30 love. That's a great play. Ginepri wants to do that more. If he can keep Andre honest on the cross-court exchanges with that nice down-the-line laser. A game to love for Ginepri. But Agassi can sit down. He leads 4-3. With a break of serve. Stunning game that last one to love. He almost felt that Andre decided, "Hey, I've, I've done enough. I just want myself to take this set." Is that what you think? Yeah, I, I feel like also Ginepri has relaxed into the match finally. We're seven games deep. You can see he's now starting to slow things down, making better decisions with his shots. He mixed up a little bit of a kicker for a first serve to keep Andre guessing. That's what got on that last game point. Took his time on the backhand down the line. So things are starting to become more clear for Jimmy. He's now in this match and he's had now four years of experience at the U.S. Open. He's played a couple of night matches. It still took him a second. He's only 21. And now it's, 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 it's going to be much more interesting, I think. Ginepri really hurt himself. He's paying the price out here having to play Andre Agassi first round for not having a very good summer. Ginepri's been up in the high 20s. And that would have been good enough to get him seated. They seated 32 here. And now Ginepri at 47 in the world, unseated. And here's what you get. He needed another 15 places, didn't he, to get into that top 32. Agassi to serve, 4-3. He's got the break. Wise choice coming in on Andre deep down the middle. Takes the angles away. that baseline. Well read, Jeanette Pree. Great wheel. He made Agassi now play a first ball. Both players know that each other has a little bit of doubt up there. That. And if in doubt, you make that player play. Well, he took it early, and now he's given himself two break-back chances to level up for all. Well, he's almost on the service line when he makes contact. With that. Andre was stunned. He just didn't move. Agassi into error and Ginepri is broken back for all. Yeah, absolutely right, Jeff. He's winning this game now. He's settled. I'm surprised 
the two times that Ginepri came to net, Agassi go for an, went for an outright winner. Why not just make Ginepri play another volley and see what he's got? Now it's the crunch time of this set, locked at four all. National coach. Oh, well, he's hit that backhand for a second time in about four shots. Clean winner. It's caught Agassi completely by surprise. And you just feel Agassi just rocking a bit here. What happened with that missed volley? How costly that was. Big time return and under a super pressure situation. Just blocked it. Nice short backswing. Well, a couple of times there, Agassi was hitting the short ball and he felt he's got to come in. But no, he wanted to go back. He just didn't want to be drawn into the net. And here's a break point for Agassi to go. 5-4 up and he served to follow. Huge point here. Certainly gave that ball a good smack. Yes. And that forehand, he's been hitting since back in the juniors, one of the best in the country. In the 16s, he went undefeated one year, went all the way through all the national tournaments, didn't lose a match, and won the national championship. Well, that forehand has paid dividends again. And he learned it from that man. And I guess he was one of the first couple players to usher in that era of big shots, big forehands that can be struck from anywhere in the court. Oh, it's gone in. I'm well in. That's disappointing. Agassi didn't mean to hit that shot, but it was effective nonetheless. And Ginepri is going to be killing himself for not going after that high volley. He's got to make a swing at a big point like that. Wow, that is a... Agassi played the shot as if the ball had been served out. Well, it was in. That's just lack of concentration. You can see Agassi's face. He's not yelling at anyone but himself. That's extraordinary. Well, he wasn't rocking there. He made thoroughly sure. And that's the sign of the true professional and legend of the game, really. He comes back after a disappointing experience and his lack of concentration gets it right back. For all juice, opening set. He's missed it. 
So Agassi with a chance to break. These are important moments in this match. There it is, Agassi breaks, 5-4. Three breaks of serve in this opening set. Two have gone to Andre, who will serve for the opening set in just 30 minutes of play. Well, that was a, a bit of a roundabout game, wasn't it? Uh, Jeff, it could have gone one way or the other. He just felt Andre was rocking just a little bit. And he just felt if Ginepri had held on there, who knows? Isn't it always like that? You get so close and you've got opportunities and Ginepri will be thinking about that high volley that he let go for quite a long time if he ends up losing this match because that was a key moment to make a statement to Andre that he's ready to step up at the big moments. Instead, he lets it go and shows Andre exactly what he wants to see. Someone who's not mentally ready to rise to this occasion. Of course, now Ginepri such a good returner, just like Agassi, is going to feel comfortable when they change sides and trying to fight off this next service game from Agassi and see if he can keep himself in the match. Or even the same. See how humid it is. Constantly changing wristbands. Does it help not to shake? Depends on the psychology of it. Let it go, and like Goliath, like uh, Samson. Andre Agassi about to serve for the opening set. Three breaks have served in this set of 30 minutes so far. Two have gone to Andre, who looks up as another plane. The umpteenth one goes overhead, right over the this Arthur Ashe Stadium course. Agassi queries it. No overall. That's what Hawkeye says. It looks clearly out. Steve Ulrich up in the chair. Says nothing. we have the benefit of a full kite. Steve Ulrich doesn't have it. I just wonder why not let the umpires have the pictures we've got. And they could just say, I've seen it, it's out, sorry. Oh, so you're saying that Hawkeye is infallible? Well, I think it's been pretty accurate. They, they use it in uh, cricket in England and it's pretty accurate. It's certainly better than, this, than the eye, I think. Yeah, but can you give it absolute authority to make the call? I would, yes. I think the technology has improved that far. Well, I don't know if the players are ready to accept that. It's they may be not be, but it's pretty, in, in England, it's uh, pretty good. <laughs> Meanwhile, Agassi serving for the set of 5-4 is 15-40 down. Nepri, this last forehand, went for broke. He knew... He was out of the point. Been able to deal with that lead core that landed right inside the baseline. All he had to do was get it over. And I have to see facing a lot of pace and aggression from Jeanette Pri. 
still got one break point. A wise move. Try to do something on that second serve. You've got to be aggressive when you have this opportunity. Yeah. What a setup. Brings it back to Juice, the favourite here. Favourite to win, favourite with the crowd. Has been for 19 years. And there's his coach, Darren, Darren Cahill. Cahill. <laughs> What Agassi has added to his game is the confidence to step up and come up with the serve at the right time. Set point. Oh, what a shot. What a way to save a set point. Yes. Well, that's what Ginepri wanted on one of those break points. But watch again how early. Just one little stutter step. He didn't have to move much. Agassi was going a little bit body. Yeah. Yeah. What makes both of these players return so tough is that they've got great acceleration from such a short backswing. Great timing, great hands. Five four Agassi, advantage Jeanette Pre, second serve. Well, that was almost impossible, wasn't it? A drive backhand volley. Five all. Ten games played, four breaks of serve, five all. But look at how well Ginepri got out to that amazing second serve. That was kicking way off the court. Ginepri cut the angle and did something that Agassi just didn't expect. And that's why you saw that crazy shot, that backhand swinging ball. He had nothing else to do. I mean, you don't expect this return to come back as deep as Ginepri put it. Agassi in at the net, doing something different. Trying to break up a, a rhythm that's been established by Ginepri over the last few games. And it paid handsome dividends. Someone's left the light bulb on. for touch. Very tough play to pull off against Ginepri. It'll keep him honest, but it's not how you want to win points. He's so quick, and he prides himself on his fitness. Oh, it's going to be close here. 5 all, 30 all. It's like a Federer erotic match where both players are just holding serve so easily. Now both players putting so much pressure on the return side. It's like they're on break. I tell you, this is a good match. A really good match. so 
important for Jim Epper. He's trying to make a name for himself. To win this one tonight. Yeah. Another great shot. And it's Jeanette Preet who leads 6 5. Andre Agassi will serve to save the set and force it into a tie break. Let's feel Jeff at the start of this uh, match, the first half of the set. He felt Agassi was in control. He was leading, what, 4 2. And Phil, oh yes, he's going to do rather well. And all of a sudden, Jeanette Preet's found. An extra gear. He's gone up. He's full of confidence and he's delivering winners. And as you say, moving very, very well. And you just feel there may be a little surprise here tonight. Could be. I think it's as much a case of Ginepri stepping up as it is Andre Agassi having the dagger in him and not twisting a bit just to push it over the edge. Ginepri was teetering on that, hmm. you know, that uncomfortable situation where you're not quite into the match and you're rushing things and Agassi have been able to take a little bit more advantage it would have discouraged Ginepri and now that entire scenario is out the window because Ginepri feels completely comfortable now he said he's been working hard and there's no doubt that he gets up for these grand slams so Ginepri feels like he deserves it Well, Andre Agassi had led 4-2 and served for the set, is now serving to save the set. And a long set this one has been, 40 minutes of it. And Jeanette with his speed and good returns, is right on the button. Standing just inside that baseline to attack and be aggressive. Well, that has produced a number of winners from that backhand side. This one, Andre is wobbling a bit. He's rushing his serve. That was a poor serve. Yeah. Does the concentration get tougher and tougher when you're 34, playing a 21-year-old? That was close. That was close to a double. Somehow he just went in. Rushing, rushing. Yeah, Seen this before with Agassi. It's just the heart sometimes drops just a little bit. If things not going his way, and it's 15:30. Two points from the first set for Ginepri. Big chance here. Well, he did stand in a little bit too close. <laughs> Went for broke. 30 all. Agassi, if my eyes I saw right, did a forehand drive volley from the baseline. Am I right? Yeah, he had to again because <laughs> Ginepri is doing such a good job on the return. Stunning. Very impressive display of returns. 40-30. This for 6 all and the tie break. And there's no sure sign of confidence on the return. And to see a guy like Ginepri stepping inside that baseline as closely as he is. But it was a good angle serve, a little spinning away from the forehand of Ginepri, making him stretch and obviously using his extra 13 years of experience. He's forced to tie break. How crucial this opening set is. 
just purely for confidence, let alone in pure fact that one set to love lead is coming up for one of them. More so for Ginepi. He's the challenger. He's the one that wants to make the first statement. Experience Andre 34, Dnepri 21, Dnepri's career tiebreak record 21 and 28. And you take it on, look at Andre Agassi 180 and 148. <laughs> oh, that's a great shot. That backhand has worked beautifully tonight. Especially when he steps in, takes it early, and literally rams it down the other side of the court. And he's relentless with it. When he misses, he goes right back and does it again. Doesn't let that discourage him. 2-1. With the mini break. 3-1. Andre and Ginepri have traded roles. You mentioned earlier, Andre is starting to rush and press a bit. That's what Ginepri was doing at the start. 4-1. And I've seen Agassi many times before. When he's in trouble, and he just has that little doubt creeping into his mind. He rushes it, rushes it. Steve DeVries for a second there. He's got to be the most nervous person, except for maybe Ginepri's mom who's in town, in well, the house. Well, this little break, because it's six points to the turnaround, I think is hugely beneficial to Andre here, who just changing the wristband. I don't think that's officially allowed, but just that Agassi just slow down just a little bit, but he's just rushing, rushing, rushing. But he's a Mini breakdown, 2-4 in this opening set. It has been, shall I say, exhilarating to say the very least. A really good match, really competitive on the opening day of this championship. <laughs> Just the one mini break separating yeah, these two. First to seven. It's going to be two points clear. Well, this must have been a long afternoon because if this match isn't going to get you excited, nothing will. That is a wonderful shot. Now the crowd don't think it was in. And I have to say it's too far away for me to call. But let's look at the Hawkeye. And it was out, says Hawkeye. And the crowd thought it was out. But we're and Agassi thought it was out. But we're seeing stuff from Agassi twice now that we're gonna that you'd only see from a rookie on tour. I mean, you've got to keep playing. I don't think he could have got it back anyway. Of course he could have. Anyway, it's 5-3, and now it's 5-4, and the break, the mini break has been pulled back. And I really do feel, Jeff, that I can see, I wouldn't say he's on the edge in the match, because there's a long way to go, but he's certainly on the edge in this set, he really is, he's, he's rocking, because Ginepri is just so consistent, forehand winners, backhand winners, and rushing Agassi into, into error. And the crowd lifting the, I have to say it, the veteran, which he is. Five all, tiebreaker. Agassi serving, it's going to be close. What a cracker of a serve, and he's got set point. And I tell you, the crowd, no doubt, Jeff, you can say when... 
but you feel here that I think the crowd does lift just oh. a little bit of extra adrenaline. It's helped. And see the set point here at 6 5 with Jamaica to serve. Just the wrong side. Agassi steps in. And he steps in well. He takes the set in 55 0 minutes. Seven points to five. In a moment, Jeff, we'll just hear your comments on a wonderful opening set. First set to Agassi 7 6. It's just sensational, it, huh? It, it's unbelievable how Agassi just stayed so calm. And he just waits around and just when he needs it, he comes up with that big serve. And it, it's just it's incredible how someone with that much experience continues to execute right when they need to get it done. And I have to say, Jeff, yeah, Agassi with that serve, marvelous, 6 5. Jeanette pre serving. And Axe, he ran round his backhand, delivered a forehand, fierce into Ginepri's backhand. If Ginepri was able to get it back, the whole court was clear. And Agassi had the confidence and the agility to run round. Here it is. Thank you, Mr. Director. Look at this. Ran right round. The court's open. Ginepri's caught out. And I think that was a marvellous piece of play from Axe. Yes, it was a little bit of a chance, wasn't it? But he delivered. Well, it's Agassi's version of a Roger Federer taking a nice slice backhand, chipping it and coming in. You see close, just how it? close this set was. And it was a great one. I mean, I give all confidence and credit to Robbie Ginepri for hanging in there. And unfortunately, he wasn't able to see it all the way through. But he could have gone down much quicker in this first set. Now it could become somewhat interesting if he can keep himself calm and collected out there and believe that he can win this match. Because he was right there with Andre Agassi. You know, get back to that point. Agassi wants to do what Agassi does best on the biggest point of the match at that point. He hits a big return. Well, that summed it up for me. Just when he felt he was going, he won it. If you've just joined us, where have you been? This is a terrific match. That's Robbie Ginepri from the United States playing Andre Agassi who's just squeezed out the first set seven points to five in the tiebreaker a match full of exhilarating power terrific shots from both players and Ginepri the 21 year old against the 34 year old Agassi who's won two US Open titles this has been the best match so far on this opening day I'm Dave Luddy with me is Jeff Grant and you certainly agree with that, Jeff. I'm sure that it's been a wonderful, entertaining battle. Yeah, this is the match of the day. That's why they put it center court at night. Feature match. And it hasn't disappointed one bit. clear example than what Andre Agassi just did to win that first set of why he's the only player to finish in the top 10 in three different decades. I don't think I can produce it for you. Yeah, Robert did not really walk away. He was looking for the kick. He was going to run around his backhand and do what Agassi did on set point, hit a forehand return. Agassi out thought him. Question is, can Ginepri maintain this tremendous level? If he does, he's got every chance. If he doesn't, if he does there at 30 all. If you like unbelievable returning of serve set your VCR right now because we've seen incredible displays from both players I tell you I know we're only on the opening day of this 14 day championship there's going to be a hell of a match to beat this one we've only had one set
he wants to hit an angle, he produces a sharp angle. When he wants to go down the line, it's seemingly straight up the line. Rarely does he get his shots in the middle of the court. Players can't take advantage. He always seems to have a purpose with the ball. He takes the opening game of the second set, having taken the first set, and you just wonder, Jeff, after what 55 minutes of play, in his mind, Ginepri well, has got nothing to show for all that wonderful play. How is it going to affect him? Now we shall see. I'll get to that right after I look at these stats. And that 76 percentage on the first serve side of Ginepri is very important. He played a very intelligent set. Keep Agassi off that second serve attack. See, three aces, he's got to get a few free points. Lots of breaks. Look at both guys, pretty good at their conversion rate. And Ginepri came to net. It, you don't see those kind of stats 13 times at net from Robbie Ginepri, but he realizes that he's got to keep Agassi guessing. Keep him honest. point David about Ginepri and can he hang in here after playing such a sound first set and losing we'll find out soon because the end of that last game that last point where Agassi won it Ginepri hit a, a check out drop shot from the baseline basically saying I'm, I want this point to end Well, there's a few little errors coming into the Ginepri game here. He has served an ace in this match. His, in this game, is full base. It's 30 all, and if Agassi gets a break, he just wonder what his mental state will be. <laughs> Wonderful play. They're standing in the rafters. They're standing everywhere. Certainly in the bleachers. Well, this is, you think you have feel. How about a little feelor, a little turnaround forehand inside out. And that gives Agassi a break point and a vital one because if he wins this to love, I just wonder what it's going to do to the Ginepri state of mind. Yes. <laughs> Well, I think there's your answer. Fifth ace. Two in this opening service game on the Jeanette for serving this set. Well, I think the answer there to the question was made. Ginepri maintaining his level. One all. Second set. Three minutes past ten at night here in New York. Fascinating battle. Oh. 
Casino. And you can't help but remember that 97 year when Andre Agassi dropped down to 141 in the world. He played a challenger tournament, 50,000 total prize money. So the winner got $6,000 at the time. Out in Vegas, his home city. I played that event. If I had won my semifinal match, I would have played Agassi in the <laughs> final. I lost to a guy named Christian Vink, and Vink took Agassi out. Agassi was a finalist at a challenger. And Agassi went on to, a couple weeks later to win the Burbank Challenger. And then 98, the biggest one-year jump in the history of the ATP. From? From 122 to number six. He won 10, he was in 10 finals that year. Agassi, 2-1. He's playing well, so is Jeanette Priest, but it's Agassi by a set. Well, Jeff, I, I just feel that Jeanette just cannot play any better now. I think he pushed Agassi to the brink in that first set. Just a couple of wonder shots, that serve and that inside-out forehand. One in this set made the difference. That's all it was. And I just feel how can any player rise again to match that level again. The second time and the third time and the fourth time that he needs that he needs three of the next four sets. Well, if you're Gnepri's coach, this is what you want to pay attention to. Does he have enough in the tank mentally to hang and to give it a five-set effort? And it's like a long marathon. Agassi's set in the pace. And can you keep up with it? And physically, Agassi, 34, 13 years, giving away. Right, some of it's genetics, a lot of it's hard work. I guess he's lucky enough to have a body that doesn't, that hasn't at least so far broken down. He had a problem with his hip earlier this year, but that's fine now. So much work in, in the weight room, too. Serving with new balls is Robbie. Jeffrey's getting another racket. I'm sorry, not Jim Jeffrey. Andre Agassi. We knew what you meant, okay. A gentleman, Andre Agassi. Second double. Well, it was a short serve, really, to be uh, dismissed, but really control it, obviously. Very short serve, and he knows it. And hit the strings. He's trying to figure something out there with his rackets and the tension. Oh, what a winner. <laughs> I'll tell you, Jeanette is on both wings can certainly hit the ball. Plus, he's got this agility. You just wonder why he is, what, 47 in the world. One, he gets a little impatient, and that kills him on clay courts. He had a horrible European swing leading into and through the French Open. Well, that backhand has done it again. And you see that backhand on a hard court or a grass court for sure is going to move through the court and get by Agassi on a clay court. It's going to sit up a bit, and Andre's going to have a play on that. 
Dnepri wasn't able to put back-to-back -back matches together all year, except for three times. And then he didn't go much farther. He'd win two matches and then lose. Really, only in the slams did he string more than that together. Washington, D.C., which was recently, and that's why he's playing so sharp tonight. It's always nice to have recent match of victories coming into a grand slam. Same baseline that we saw an egregious error made a few games ago against Andre Agassi. This far out. And that's they even out. Now that's a case we're not seeing Hawkeye. I guarantee that we would be. I have a feeling that somehow it didn't register. Well, there were maybe one of the cameras was sure. blocked. Absolutely. Inconclusive. Great point anyway to Andre Axel for 3 1 lead. Yep, he's still trying to vent. Another break points for Andre. Crucial moments for Jeanette Preet. Must stay cool. Well, I think he just lost control of himself. A double fault has given Andre Agassi a 3-1 lead in the second set and by little things, major things are decided and that may very well be a, a big moment in this match, Jeff. It's a maturity issue, there's no doubt. You can see examples exactly the same call on how Andre Agassi dealt with it at 34 years old and how the 21-year-old Robbie Ginepri is dealing with it right now. 3-1 Agassi, given that game with that double. Oh, around the net. Now. Now the umpire had two hands in front of his face. The lines person, excuse me, said that he didn't see the call. That's why there was no call made. No, if the plane overhead did go, we might be able to hear what's going on. Warren said, I overruled. And in Washington, D.C., I was watching Ginepri's first round match against Harold Levy, and he had a call go against him, and he got furious. But he used it to his advantage. He lost one game after that call. I like John McEnroe. He got completely fired up. Four aces under Agassi, who's steamrollering a bit here to 4 1 up. If he can win one of the next three points. Yeah. Oh, some terrific serving here from Andre, who from nowhere has just sprinted to 4 1. And the whole game and the whole complex. This match has changed. And Jeff. Uh, Ginepri losing control of himself and perhaps losing control of the match. Well, he's starting to feel that Steve Ulrich has it out for him and he's saying, you know, he didn't overrule the call that was a clear mistake that was going to go for me. And then there's another call on the other side just a few points later and then you overrule that one. Why didn't you overrule the one for me as well? It's just... 
one of those things you're on the court and you've got to somehow get through it because Ginepri has a good point. I mean, he's he's right. It, it looked out even from up here, that ball, and it was a big point. He's still trying to hold. It's still eating away at him, but he's eating away on his <laughs> munch bar and he's eating away inside. I just wonder whether, in fact, that, that really has changed the whole complexion of the match, really. Well, it certainly changed the complexion of that one break, which is going to for sure change, change already change this set. I mean, Ginepri double faulted after he got all worked up about that line call. Now maybe the cold water on his head is going to help him out. Robbie Ginepri is serving at a set and 4-1 down in this second set. thinking about it. He hammered that second serve in frustration. And another one. Seven pass. Fourth in this set. If you can somehow harness that energy and make it work for you, that's okay. That's also part of it, isn't it? That for him, a weak backhand into the net. That's what he's doing. So Ginepri holds, but it's Agassi 4-2 in this second set, and you just feel like he's got a really good grip on this match now, simply because this man here has just lost control after a couple of line calls that went against him. I just feel that Agassi's experience will bring him home, but he was 4-2 up in the first set and only just won it 7-5. The tie break. Oh. I think the played really well. The match has lasted an hour and 13 minutes so far. Just about, I think it is just three sets at the halfway stage, but who knows? Who knows? It's been a match full of twists and turns. One minute Agassi ahead, Ginepri looking in control, certainly in the tiebreaker. Actually putting out two wondrous shots, a serve and an inside-out forehand to snatch the set, and Ginepri now losing patience and control, but still hitting that ball really hard, as you can see. Angle from Ginepri and it was deep as well. And actually being pushed again here, 15 30. 15 40, and here Ginepri comes again, exactly like the opening set. He's gathered himself again. He's going to be encouraged by some good shots in this game.
That's when you thought Agassi was going to get away from his American rival. Jeanette Prius held on. And he has held on, and he's broken back. And Jeanette Prius, despite being a set down, has now pulled it back to 3 4 with the serve to come in the second. And Jeff, that really has come as a surprise. Uh, Andre seemed to be away, didn't he? 4 1, and, and then Jeanette Prius pulled pull back again. A drop of concentration on Agassi, or an increased level from Jeanette Prius? Well, Jeanette Prius was ship in a storm we thought he'd just keep going out to sea and he righted it very nicely using that energy that he had on the changeover came out and hit some unbelievable second serves really and then you saw him carry it over into the return game so a nice little mental recovery from Ginepri. I'm not sure if Agassi expected that right away probably figured from the body language that Ginepri was exuding going into the last change over that he might be getting a little bit discouraged and letting that bad line call affect him. But nice piece of maturity. But he must be encouraged. Andre shouldn't be too discouraged after all he's a set and four three up. And break here and he's served to follow and he'll be two sets to love up and he's playing a, a tricky opponent and a very tough opponent for an opening match. Robbie Jeanette pre to serve, 3-4 down in this second set, having just broken back. A match full of thrills and spills and drama and wonderful shots, errors as well. But it's been exciting throughout the whole of the hour and 15 minutes. It does seem actually much longer. But every rally has been contested, every points being competitive. One man at the end of his career, heading towards the end of it anyway, and this man here, pretty much at the start. Nice little kicker for a first serve, pushed Agassi off the court. Momentum swinging back to Jeanette now. Eight aces, five in this set. Nine aces, six in this set. Uh, just in the last two games, there's been a marked difference in the Ginepri serve. Got a lot more pop on. And so young, that adrenaline at 21 years old, boiling over. I want you to think about this next one, Jeff, as Jeanette Prix serves in the moment at 40-30, that you talk about the energy that Jeanette Prix's got. Accuracy at 34, how difficult is it to concentrate hour upon hour at 34? And indeed, why would it be difficult if it was? For a normal mortal or for Andre Agassi? <laughs> for Andre. Andre's so used to this. I, you know, I think he's just, he gets even better over time because he knows it's such a long format, three out of five sets, and you saw him be so calm in the first set, and just when he saw his opportunity, he took it, and this is what he's gonna try to do in the second. Andre's service percentage in this set is 35% first serve. And I wonder why he's chastising himself. I think I understood we, some of we that. We heard it clearly. We won't repeat it. With good reason, Andre wants to get that first serve in because Ginepri's putting a lot of pressure on the second. It's not fun to have to hit passing shot after passing shot, even if you're Agassi. Four all in this second set. Yeah, first serve's gone in.
That was a great second too. <laughs> that was an amazing second serve. 40 love for a 5-4 lead. It's good to take those chances when the player is pressing you on your second. Shows them a completely different ball, takes them out of the rhythm of the return. Well, Ginetti fails in that 50-50 chance of going for the inside-out winner. And Agassi leads by set and 5-4. Ginetti will serve to save the second. David, you asked much earlier about Andre Agassi and his commitment to the game and just how long is he going to stay out there. And I figured that he'd give some answer, you know, it's about making decisions for myself and, you know, when I think it's time for me to go, I'm going to go and something completely different. He said, there are a lot of people counting on me. The longer I play, the better it is for the game and the better it is for my college preparatory academy, which he started years ago in Las Vegas. And he set up the Andre Agassi Foundation, which funds that private school, it's a charter school, which he hopes to use, that, that, to have that blueprint used for other schools around the country. He said, the more I play, the more money I can get to the foundation, the more visible I am, therefore the more people are going to want to give to my charity because I'm active in the sport, I'm still in the public eye. And it was amazing, really, to hear that. And, also, in a way, not surprising because he's one of the best characters in the game right now. He's so generous. His foundation dwarfs any other athlete's foundation throughout the world. $60 million, upwards of $60 million in that foundation. He said he's trying to endow, and he already has endowed a lot of the funding for his preparatory academy. Seats, please. Seats, please. Seats, please. Robbie Ginepri is serving to save this second set. And to save himself from going two cents to love down. Oh, that just missed that return. backhand be deadly. Wow, that's a badness. Short ball. Just a little bit lazy off the blocks, Jeanette, but he didn't get his feet in position. And here we have Juice and nowhere, obviously, might just sneak out this set. As he did the first one. So clearly Ginepri's trying to Joe Agassi, something different nearly every serve. Big serve there from Ginepri to hold Agassi's run. Oh, well, a couple of lazy points in this in this vital game here from uh, Ginepri. He's got to maintain this high standard that he's set himself in the last hour and a half or so, and now it's Juice again. 
four five. So now he's actually going to really go for the second serve. And Agassi has a set point for two cents to love lead. Virtually any other match, they'd be cheering for Ginepri. Unfortunate match up here. The crowd wants this man. It's Agassi, two sets to love. Six for all that set in 36 minutes, having taken the first 7-6. Agassi is in charge. It is by two sets to love. I just feel, Jeff, in that last game, I just, Jeanette, who made just a couple of errors that uh, his feet sort of slowed underneath him. He feel his brain slowed. And you know, he maintained such a terrific pace that he just couldn't produce another game of such high quality that he needed. Oh, the weight of the moment is what does it to you. And that's why sport is so compelling in general. It's just something that you can't get around, the pressure of the moment. Everyone's watching. You know that it's coming down the crunch time. Ginepri knows that if he loses that game, the sets are over. He's down two sets of love, and that takes its toll on the athlete. And you saw Ginepri get a little pressed. And he got a little nervous. The feet start moving a little bit slower. They get heavier when you get nervous. He was definitely, his feet seemed to have a couple of dead weights on them. He just didn't get into position. There were two particular points, vital points, that he lost. And all well, because of his head and, and the feelings of the, of the moment. Look yeah, at that one short ball that was sitting there for him on the forehand side. Do you feel he can get out of this? Do you feel he can sort of take a set and slowly claw his way back into this? He certainly produced enough play tonight to warrant at least a set under his belt. Yeah, it's good. Andre's now very relaxed in this situation. But yeah, Ginepri, Ginepri should try to keep fighting. He, he needs this. He needs this for his own confidence, for his own pride. Andre Agassi is serving at the start of the third set. He leads Robbie Ginepri by two sets to love. Love it. And after the first two sets, how composed Agassi was, you can see how last year he had the second best winning percentage on tour. Eighty-two percent of his matches Andre Agassi won. Because he stays so comfortable in tight situations. And he knows now after the history and the numbers that Andre Agassi has put up, he knows that a player like Ginepri is going to start feeling that pressure. It's going to work towards him. You're going to get those free points just based on who you are, that Agassi or
Nearly a good pick up on the volley. If you don't spot that serve up perfectly, both players are going to make you pay for it. Oh, he said cool. He took his time. I know it was a short ball, but he took it so well. And he goes to 40-30 on his open serve in this third set. There's a lot of volleys that Axe is playing inside the baseline. Well, he said he realized something in L.A. after he lost to Haas this year. Yeah, he realized that he would get players scrambling and get them stretched out and not move forward in the court and take advantage of those sitters that were coming back. And he'd let guys scrap their, ways, their way back into points. He made a conscious effort and it paid off in Cincinnati to get forward. There's a lovely backhand from Jeanette Lee again. Taking the ball really early, stepping in. It's produced a lot of winners with that backhand. In fact, 10 in the match. He gets that left hand through so nicely. Presses with that left arm. Another cool curve of a winner. And here's a chance for Ginepri to strike right at the start of this third set. Your number 10 in break points saved. Uh, the calls have been a bit late and a bit dodgy this whole match. That's disconcerting for both players. That's disconcerting for Ginepri. Agassi, five aces, holds his serve. Coming in a break point down on lead by two sets to love. You just still get the feeling that the changing of the guard hasn't happened. Agassi is still the king, and you can see it in Ginepri's eyes. Here's a nice breakdown. Ginepri still doing a good job staying to his strategy of keeping a lot of first serves in. Agassi got so upset at himself because of that number on his first serve percentage last set. 33%, yet he still won the set. So he's playing still some very sharp tennis from the ground. Unforced errors was the undoing for Ginepri. 13 in total. And now if you compare for the match, Ginepri's got 29 unforced errors compared to Agassi's 13. So in one set, Robbie Ginepri equaled what Agassi's done in the match. Well, I know Ginepri wanted a dry volley there, which he did, but he probably could have waited. He wanted to be spectacular, and he pay heavily for that. Uh, just like we saw earlier with Roger Federer in his first round win, Andre Agassi starting to increase the pressure. That backhand down the line is clear evidence of that. Oh. 
both players, Federer and Agassi, such great front runners. They get more and more confident, start going for more, and with their talent, it usually goes in. Three break points for Agassi here, and you just feel if Agassi just clinches this, Jeanette's head just beginning to droop here. Confidence just beginning to go just a little. Just feel the spark, even though it's producing some winners, is not quite there as it was in the first couple of sets, or certainly for the first set and a half or so. But he is capable of producing a stream of winners which still embarrass his great rival. Ginepri down a bit. And it works. Yep. Two love Agassi with the break. And you just feel Ginepri's given everything here and he's, he's made no inroads whatsoever. And when you think you've played an hour and 37 minutes, say, so what have I got to show for it? Nothing. I've got to start from zero. That is a big, tall order. And this man, the master, is in charge. I'm going to read the transcript of the interviews and see if Andre gets asked about all these racket changes because there is definitely something going on here tonight. Maybe it feels like the ball's flying a bit. Seven with new balls of two love. And produces a nice little steady serve, great angle, just 104 miles an hour. Connect be rooted to the spot and just wonder whether the match is going to end swiftly if Ginepri's desire is ebbing away. Some spectators behind Ginepri, in fact pretty near where we are, just moving around. One of the suits in the corporate box. Those suits. a wonderful serve with spin. One of the resistance is over. Eight ace. Four in this set. game and the match is slowly slowly and gathering speed heading towards an Agassi victory because he leads by two sets to love and three love in the third. I just feel Jeff that uh, Ginepri his head is gone here isn't it he just chucked his racket into his seat and then you just feel I just cannot break this man down. Yeah you feel helpless out there feel like you've done everything you could and you're still losing. You played two solid first sets. Not able to get through it, but look at all the unforced airs. He's hit quite a number of good, solid backhand winners, but he's also missing quite a few. He hasn't been in net. He was at net 13 times after the first set, and now that's completely gone away. So Agassiz managed to keep him back keep him at bay and start dictating to Ginepri how the points are going to unfold. And now you see Agassi starting to get bigger serves and go for a few more backhands down the line for winners. And he's seen this scenario play out so many times and Agassi just expects it now. It's such a good job managing this match, managing the tight moment. Robert Ginepri is serving uh, two sets to Love Down and Love Three. 
against Andre Agassi. After two scintillating opening sets. It's just a little bit damp this this set as Janakri's level is, has dropped. maybe one more good push from Ginepri. He realizes that he's almost done here. He's going to relax a little bit. Yeah. So that's if Agassi lets him back in. And that approach shot crept just a little bit too much back towards the center and Agassi had a good cut at it. as he can get, he's 10. So hopefully another will give him the game. He needs to break his duck in this third set. Oh. After wondering what kind of food these players have, I saw Ginepri out at a restaurant ironically last night. Went over and asked him what he had ordered. He said, big old filet. So some good red meat <laughs> and some spinach. Well, that was a wonderful return by Axe. He was at full stretch. Yes. He's pulled it back to juice. Well, maybe he might rethink that pre-match meal. It hasn't served him right. Just stick to the pasta. desperation in there for him. Ginepri gets on the board, so to speak, in this third set, but it's Agassi 3-1. And now Ginepri's got to be careful of giving away too many points right now. He at least wants to hang tight. You know, let's just see what Agassi's going to come up with. Make him finish you off. Do what you can do, especially on your own service games. Just in case, you never know. public image you want to give the best fight you can it's going out nationally around the world or internationally around the world nationally in the states all over I don't know whether think of that. I do that. Well, these players should be concerned about their image and that was this man's slogan when he came out image is everything <laughs> how he has evolved he was able to back it up with wonderful talent well, Agus has raced, isn't he, to 40 love and I just feel maybe it's same with the last couple of games. It just, just needs one big last attack to stay in here. And you feel that could be the case, Jeff. Don't you? Well, look where he's standing. Well, that's.
That is too good. That is too good to beat Ginepri, who is audacious standing in on that second serve. He's almost up to the T-junction. Anyway, Agassi leads 4-1 and by two sets to love. Is it the end of the road, Jeff, for Ginepri? Uh, unfortunately, I think it is. I, I love watching Ginepri play, and he's no doubt the future of American tennis. He's only 21. He's got a lot of years to play, but right now and tonight, he just one had a tough draw. Two hasn't been able to step up to the level of Agassi on the huge points. He held tough in every state of the match in the first two sets, at least. And just hasn't been able to really see that happening. He's still fighting and bumping up against that Agassi game one because Agassi's so talented and he's beating Robbie Ginepri to the punch from the ground. And Ginepri just has to chalk this up to experience. And for Agassi, if he does win, this uh, could do for him. Yeah, always getting through your first rounds nerve-wracking. But against a good player. Certainly. Robbie Ginepri is in trouble here. Two cents to love down, 4-1 down, but serving. going isn't it the match is disappearing down the tube and should Agassi get through this match he's got to play the winner of Florian Meyer and Flavio Soretta Florian Meyer one of my favorites he came out of nowhere this year a young German semi-final in Estoril beat a couple of good players in Hamburg in his home country beat Yuri Novak Albert Portis Ginepri serving here to save another break, but he's missed the forehand and he's been broken to love. And Agassi's going to serve at 5 1 up in the third. He's going to serve for the match. A disappointing evening for Steve DeVries. So Andre Agassi serving for the match. To move into round two of this US Open Championship. Who knows whether this is his last one. He's 34, but he's played well enough tonight to dismiss a really, really good opponent. Not bad for an old man. 120 miles an hour. 30-15. And he's within two points of a victory. In well under two hours. My word, Agassi came close to losing that opening set. On its seven points to five in the tie break. He was caught in a second by Ginepri, who has produced some wonderful winners. 37, in fact. But the unforced error count is too high. Still battling, but the heart is not there, and maybe the legs aren't there either. He's certainly slowed up a lot. 30 all.
called out, I think. <laughs> Ginepri. I think it was called out. It was called out. 30, 40. Great running from Ginepri. And good to see, too, that he wasn't going to fold as it did appear. Break point for Ginepri when Agassi was on the verge of finishing this match. Ginepri held up his hands as if to say, I'm, I'm still here, I'm still hanging in there. It's a little too, too little too late. sort of shot that Ginepri produced in his first couple of sets when his motivation and his desire and his adrenaline was flowing. And now he's got a chance to break back. Remember, he's a double breakdown at the moment. And he's pulled one of those back. So Agassi leads 5-2. Jeanette Pre hangs in, breaking. And he knows it's not over till it's over. But Jeff, is that just a short intermission before the battle is over? Yeah, it's like one of those dying gasps before you go completely under. And it's so much easier to produce good tennis when you're in that situation. And now it's about enjoying the moment and staying out there as long as you possibly can. Because unfortunately, a terrible draw for Ginepri in his singles for the U.S. Open this year is one game away from being over. And you, you never want to go out first round in a major, especially when you're playing your home country's Grand Slam. So he's going to try to milk this situation. And I think in his mind he's going to just try to stay focused. He feels like he's pretty much in the locker room, but hey, you never know. Ginepri has come back from two sets to love down one time. I don't think it was against someone like Agassi. Well, will this be the last game? Ginepri has just broken Agassi to trail 2-5 in this third set. And by two sets to love, he's surely going to try to hold his serve here and hope for the best that he can break Agassi again. I just feel physically, I think, Jeff, he's put a lot of physical and mental effort into this. And I just feel he's weakening physically just a little. just a little slower, getting into position just a little slower and therefore making the error. And it's Love 30, two points from victory. I think more so than just purely physical, I think it's just Andre Agassi has taken the spirit out of Ginepri. Good point. Three match points to Andre Agassi. He took the first set 7-6, seven, 7 points to 5 in the tie break. The second set 6-4, he leads 5-2 in his third. And he has three match points to move into round two.
It's out. And Agassi has won. Pumps his fist. He's beaten Robbie Ginepri in straight sets. These American rivals. And Steve Ulrich. There he is in the chair. Calls it 7-6. 6-4, 6-2. And even though Agassi won comfortably at the finish, my word was he pressed in that opening set. And Ginepri produced some sparkling winners. And my word did he run and run and run.